Okay, so with this base head still loaded, we're going, to, we're going to cover some quick brushes and techniques for what I like to use in my in my workflow. Now, typically I'll stick to a handful of brushes, um, you know, one to five, possibly six, but mainly when I'm sculpting, it's, it's there's three top brushes that I like to use. Now, to access our brush menu, you can go ahead and tap B, and you'll get us an assortment of brushes that might seem overwhelming as a lot of these softwares might feel. However, we can quickly just tackle three of these brushes and move from there. So our first brush is gonna be our move brush. So if I tap B again, it'll disappear. Tap B again, it reappears, okay? So if I tap B and tap M for move, M for move, we get all of our M brushes. Now there's a lot of stuff here. There's masking brushes, there's move brushes, a lot of stuff that we'll cover as we continue. However, what we're looking for is this move brush. So V, so one of our first hotkeys is gonna be B, M, V for move. Now what the move brush allows us to do is to do what it, do is exactly what it says. We can move this clay. You see this? We can move the clay. To undo that, I'm gonna tap Control Z. That lets me undo my previous move set. Okay, Control Z. Now if you notice this red, this red circular reticle, that's our brush size and our brush softness, basically our focal shift. So if I tap spacebar, tap and hold, right? I get another menu that pops up. Now this is typically where I like to control my brush size. If, you, if I tap spacebar and hold, you'll see that there's a draw size here. It's at 62. If I move my draw size up to the right, it gets bigger, down, it gets smaller. You see that? So if I make it a little bit bigger here, and I move, boom, I can move a bigger chunk of her head, right? And I can start manipulating things how I'd like with this move brush. It just moves the clay. Pretty straightforward. I can control Z, control Z to undo all of that. Now, that is the draw size, controls the size of the brush. If you notice, there's an inner circle within the big red circle. That inner circle is my focal shift. So right now it's at zero. This is the hardness and softness of the brush. The closer it is to the outer ring, so if I lower my focal shift, the harder of a fall off it will be. So if I move this clay, you see that? It's a really harsh line from here to here, right? It's really, really harsh. It's hard to soften that move if I was to make the brush bigger and give me a softer fall off. You see this? It's a softer fall off to the move. Now there's a balance there. Sometimes you like a harder fall off and sometimes you want a softer fall off but again just space bar and it automatically wherever your brush is it'll land on draw size so for me it's nice and quickly and easily accessible when I sculpt so for me space bar is where I like to control these settings another setting that we can quickly take a look at is our, if our draw size is the size of the brush the focus shift is how hard that brush is our Z intensity right here controls the intensity of the brush, how how much pressure the brush has. So if I have 100% intensity and I move something, it's, it moves at 100%. That means it has 100% pressure um, towards that brush. Now, if I lower my Z intensity, right, it's less sensitive. So now when I try to move, it's really hard to move a big chunk because I have low Z intensity. So finding a perfect balance between all three of these is typically what will help you improve your sculpting is specifically for each brush. Um, but now that we covered the move brush, let's go into our second brush. So once I'm done moving pieces, right? Let me pump up to the intensity here. Now I can start adding clay. I want to get a clay. I want to start building up clay on my clay on my sculpture. Now there's a perfect brush for that. So if I tap B and then I go to C, this gives me all of my C brushes from chisels to clay brushes to clip curves and all the assortment of C brushes. However, what I'm looking for is clay buildup. So if I tap B, we got our clay buildup. So if I tap B, C, right here, we got our clay buildup, B, so another hotkey, B, C, B, we get this brush that allows us to start adding clay to our mesh. You see that? Control Z, Control Z. Now again, if I wanna make this brush size bigger, maybe a softer fall off, Right, I can start to softly add build up forms. I right? always constantly adjusting my draw size. 
and I can and we can begin to sculpt and we're just adding clay pretty neat all right if I want to move stuff B M V for move all right I can start to move stuff and now we're sculpting and with just those two brushes we can do a lot okay for has for L for how many brushes Z brush gives you access to you only need you only need a handful to really get what you're looking for let's not try to get overwhelmed in the beginning you know there's brushes in there that are one-offs that like you might only use for a specific a specific part in sculpting whatever it may be um, however with just a handful of tools you can get what you need the second brush is more like a draw brush so like with a pencil or for sculpting you can carve in something so to access this tool you're gonna tap B again for a brush menu D for dam Okay, you get your D brushes, and this brush right here, Dam Standard, that's what we're gonna be clicking. So S. So B, D for Dam, and S for Standard. Now what this brush does, it allows us to carve in. Do you see this? We're almost drawing on the mesh. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna up my subdivision levels. So if you notice, you can see every square here on the model. If I tap Control D, it kind of smooths it one time. Control D again, it smooths it another. I'm just doing this so that I can preview the brush a little bit better here. Do you see that? It allows me to draw. And that's damn standard. So B, D, S for standard. Again, the subdivisions we're going to go over in a further video in, in, in more depth. Um, but for now, if you just tap Control D a couple times, you can start to test some of these brushes a little bit more in depth, for example. With this damn standard, if I want to start to add some, you know, nice eyebrow, break up here, get our nostrils nice and carved in. So with any of these brushes, for example, if I have my clay buildup, so B, C for clay, B for buildup, I can smooth things out. So if I tap and hold shift, I can smooth out the clay. Do you see that? I can make my brush big, smooth out the clay. It starts to get rid of a lot of the noise Makes things a little easier. Now again, every brush you control the size, the focal shift, the Z intensity, right? To kind of get the brush to act as you like. For the clay buildup, sometimes I'll go with softer focal shift with the lower Z intensity to get these nice subtle form buildups. All right, but maybe when I'm blocking stuff in, I might have a harsher focal shift with a higher Z intensity so I can make broader strokes without getting too bogged down on the minute details. So again, it just depends on what I'm doing, what you're doing. I can smooth this out with shift. Now, another cool trick with the brushes is that if I have, so if clay buildup is building the clay up, but it's like, hey, Carlos, I wanna, I wanna carve it out. What I could do is hold alt and alt will do the opposite. It will carve in. Do you see that? So alt will carve in, not pressing alt will carve up. I can hold shift to smooth all this out shift to smooth this out and get my move brush B M and V and I can move things around I can get my carving brush my damn standard B D S and I can start carving and again the same thing with this carving tool if I want to carve up I can hold alt and it carves up see that alt so I can carve down carve up carve down carve up there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with these tools. Feel free to experiment, try as much tools as you can in there. There's a lot to play with. Another one to take note of is trim dynamic. So if I wanna just kinda hard chisel something out, I can tap B, go to T for my trim brushes, and then D for dynamic, which is right down here. So B, T, and D as in dog. And you get this trim dynamic. Sometimes I'll use this brush instead of smooth or oftentimes I'll use this instead of smooth because I get a nice chiseled effect here. And for me, I personally like that stylization of the clay. And so sometimes instead of smooth, I'll just carve out these planes with my trim dynamic so that I get better breaks, nicer looking breaks, harsher forms. And so keep in mind that if you ever see me, if you ever see a piece of my form on the sculpt getting smoothed out, but it doesn't feel like a smooth, it's more of like a hard chisel, I'll be using this trim dynamic. And again, throughout the course, I'll go ahead and try to call out every specific brush that I'm using if I can. Um, however, if I, if I ever use a new brush that you didn't see here, I'll bring it up and call it out. 
But from there, again, feel free to explore the brushes. There's a, there's a lot for you to play with. Have fun. Um, let's continue on with the course.